Hey all, Lawrence from Lawrence Creates, and in this video we are going to be taking a look at the uh, the recently added visual scripting language uh, from Unity. Um, now I saw this uh, get released in preview uh, a, a while back, but I never took a look at it. I, I try not to take a look at features that are still unstable in Unity. However, um, I was messing around with one of my personal projects um, and I was looking at the packages Unity supplies and I actually noticed that the visual scripting uh, package for Unity is now released. Um, and I don't really follow much of the Unity updates, I just kind of use what I'm given sort of deal. Um, and now that it's released, uh, I literally have just spent the last two or three hours taking a look at it and I gotta say, I do really like it. Um, if you're someone that uh, doesn't know how to code, uh, usually I would have recommended people to go to another engine um, that's a, that's a, basically a, a block coding language. But, um, but now that Unity has this visual scripting language, I will highly recommend a lot of new beginners to use it. Because it is very, from what I've uh, played around with uh, in, in the last couple of hours, it is very simple to use. Um, so the first thing you guys are going to want to uh, add is the package itself. So it's released now, so you should just find it in the Unity registry under, under the packages. For me, it said there was an update, so I updated it and then I installed it. Um, as you can see, it's now released. Um, and uh, the version of Unity I'm using is 2021.3.1 F1. Now, I've already done a little bit to this scene just to get us going so we're not here all day. I've added a player. On this player, it has a rigid body, uh, 2D, and a collider 2D. On this coin, it has the same setup. The only difference is uh, it's orange. So, the first thing we need in order for any visual script to work is something called a script machine. So, if we just have script machine for a component, this is a script machine. Essentially, what this does is runs our visual scripts. So because I want a, a, a way to differentiate a, a normal C-sharp script that I'd write and a node script, I created a node scripts folder. And we just right click in there, we want to click create, and there's a new visual scripting tab after you've installed that package. What we'll be using today is something called a script graph, so we're just going to add that. And the first thing we want is a way for our players to move. So I'm simply going to call this move. If we double click on this, that's going to open up a fancy new Unity window. It may look pretty imposing at the moment, but I haven't really messed around with any of these side things yet. Um, I will in the future, and if you guys want a, a more in-depth tutorial on the visual scripting uh, editor, I'd be more than happy to do it. Um, but I'm basically going to show you guys what I've taught myself in the last two or, two or three hours. So, like any script you make in Unity, there are core there are core functions that we need to use. The main function is our update function. So, in the scripting language, that's called on update, and this is our block. Now, every uh, every block will kind of have a arrow, and this is kind of the direction of the code, and each one needs to be plugged in. If we just add a random node, uh, let's actually add an if because we're going to be needing that. Um, you can see that once I click off of it, it's not, um, it's not, uh, it's kind of grayed out, right? That's kind of letting you know that, hey, you have this node here, but it, it's not being used. And even if we plug um, some information into the Boolean value here, it still would be grayed out. When we plug the update function in, it's going to light up. So it's yellow right now because it's giving us a warning uh, and uh, it's telling you right here condition is missing and that condition is the boolean. So if we just right click instead of left clicking these arrows, we can remove them. We're going to keep this if statement here because we will need it. However, we're wanting to get some key input. So basically everything you guys know if you, uh, if you do know scripting um, in Unity is essentially all searchable. Uh, in this in this little window here. So what we want is a input and we want to get key. So just the input get key. I don't know why that took me a while to look at it. Um, but basically this is how it works. We go on update, we then want to get a key and 
then we want to say if. And this if statement wants a boolean. This is going to be our key. What key do we want? Let's start off with the W key. So on update, if the W key is pressed, we're going to plug it into this if statement. And what are we going to do if it's true? And what are we going to do if it's false? Well, for now, we don't want to do anything if it's false. But if it's true, we want to get our rigid body 2D. We want to add false. So we can plug the true value into the arrow over here. And what force do we want to add? Well, we probably going to want to move this up. So I believe that is just uh, five. No, no, sorry, this is the X value. So it's X, Y, uh, five on the Y, uh, and that should be good. So we can save that. And if we press W, oh, my bad. Uh, on the player, you want to make sure that we actually add this script graph into our script machine. Uh, so now if we play, pressing W will move us up. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but as soon as I press this play button, I was in the scene. How do we do that? Uh, well, you want to go into edit and you want to click on, uh, where was it, where was it, project settings. Uh, in the editor tab, scroll, scroll down to you see enter play mode options. You just want to check this option. Um, essentially, what that'll do is stop the, the stop Unity from reloading the scene, um, and it'll basically inst instantly put you into the scene. Now, I have noticed a few bugs, uh, but for now, uh, with the script machine, uh, it's fine. Um, so that's essentially it. Now we just want to get basically all our directions, and we can quite literally just copy and paste these um, these nodes here. So for going backwards or down rather, um, I'm going to get the S key and instead of being 5, it's going to be negative 5. Now to go left, which is going to be the A key. There it is. Uh, instead of it being uh, 5, it's going to be negative 5 on the X. And then going right, that's going to be the D key. And this is just going to be 5. So if we save that, close it, we should now have full movement. There we go. And we can push that coin around because there is no uh, interaction with that yet. Cool. So let's kind of make this a collectible coin now. So nothing too complicated. We're just going to hit it and it's just going to disappear. Um, so I'm going to create a new visual script, script graph and we're just going to call it collect. Now on the coin, same thing, this needs a script machine and we're going to put our collect uh, visual script graph there and we're going to double click this. So what do we do in scripting when we want uh, collisions to happen? Well, we want a on collision and we have two variants like in coding, we have the normal 3D variant and we have the 2D variant. So we're the on collision enter. Now, what do we want to do with this? Well, we kind of think about it how we will do it in code. We want to get the game object we're colliding with and we want to check something. In this case, I'm just going to be checking the name. So we have this collider bit here and the cool thing about Unity is if you don't know what something does, click out and left click and then left click again it will open up the node window, however, it'll the, the topmost option is going to be the field uh, it, with what you're kind of pulling out, what you're branching out to. So in our Collider 2D, we have this exposed Collider 2D. Um, now you can get the individual components, but to make life easier, I don't see why you shouldn't just expose everything. Because now we can see everything, right? We have the name, we have the game object, like we have everything. So what do we want? Well, we want to check the name that we're colliding with. So there's a game object bit here. We will click this again um, and then just left click again. And now it's going to give us this game object bit here. What do we want from this game object? We, we want the name. So let's scroll down and get name. Okay, that's, that's all pretty straightforward. But now what do we want? Well, 
now we want to compare this name with something, right? So once again, drag out, left click, click on string, and now we find the contains value. Now there are two values here. You want to make sure you select the right one. You have a value which is a string input and a value which is a character input. We want the string input. And this value is going to be player because that's our player name. Now you can see something, uh, something here that's different with all of these nodes. All of these nodes are just basically for information. Apologies, a motorbike just drove past my house. I'm not sure if you guys could hear that, but apologies for that. Um, so these nodes are just kind of information nodes. So these can just kind of get input without needing to have any kind of loop go through them. However, this string node, because it's comparing a value, it needs to be, it needs to run. So we can plug this into our on collision enter, right? So now you can see the whole loop lights up because now it's running. So what this is doing is on collision enter, doesn't matter what the object is, uh, we're going to get the collider, uh, we're going to expose these values, we're going to get the game object, we want to get the name of the game object, and we want to check if that string contains the name of player. If it does, well, that's what we need next. We want if. So we can plug this in, and you notice on our if, we now have another arrow, so we need to drag that. So if it's true, what do we want to do? Well, we want to destroy the, the we want to destroy the coin. So uh, let us uh, simply go and uh, we want to expose uh, our own game object, right? Um, because we want to destroy this. Um, another quick thing, actually, is uncheck this static area. I don't know why, for me personally, every time these are static, I don't actually know what they do, but when these are static, uh, it seems to just break things. So, yeah, just get rid of that. Now, what do we do next? Uh, well, again, super simple. We want the game object, uh, which is right here. Left click, click on game object, and destroy. And we plug in the true arrow from our if statement. And that's it. Basically, we get all the information we need from the collider. We get the game object from the collider. We get the name from the game object. We check if that game object contains the name player. And we plug the Boolean state into the, uh, the if statement. Um, and if it's true, we destroy the game object. So let's save that. And we can put more of these coins in just to give it a test. So we'll just put three or four in. Notice that all of these are using the same script, um, or the visual script, and our player should now, yep, as soon as he collides with them, all those coins get destroyed. And there you have it. Uh, uh, just a quick little tutorial. Um, I know I haven't ma been making a lot of videos lately. It's kind of hard to find time. I'm kind of really busy right now. But I, I, I do want to try and make the occasional video. Um, hopefully when I do make a video, it is something uh, with, with some de decent information that you guys can, uh, can assimilate and kind of implement into your own projects. Now, I do highly recommend the visual scripting language. Super easy to use. It's essentially just a blocked version of if you would code in C Sharp. So if you really want to just quickly get an idea down without coding, um, it's really cool, good for prototyping. And it's even better if you're new to game development and you, uh, you basically have no idea what to do. Um, like I said, like if any of these values, right? Any of them at all, you can, you can left click and then left click again and Unity will basically tell you what you can do with this node which is fantastic I, I like that's that's great you know super easy same thing for this data um, I actually don't know what this data uh, thing is so we're gonna click on it uh, it suggested me this code base thing and I'm like okay and so I'm kind of just ex exploring with it you know what is it but, you know, I, st I still don't understand what it's trying to suggest to me. But regardless, you know, that's basically what you do. Um, again, with these arrows, you can do the same thing. And it's going to, uh, it's going to recommend you, you know, what to best do with it. But that's essentially it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.